Howdy ho, everyone, and welcome back to Kenshi. Today we're going to horribly exploit and just ruin Kenshi by achieving level 100 thievery in less than one day. Then we're going to use it to steal everything from everyone and become the most elusive shadow thief to ever walk the earth. Today's exploit is one I learned from an incredible YouTuber friend of mine named Frankie was here who makes guide videos on how to just utterly break and ruin Kenshi and some of the craziest stat exploits I've ever seen. There's a million ways to do this in this game, but today I decided I'd try to see if I could do it with thievery, stealth, and secrecy to get rich from stealing things from other people. But before I get started, do me a favor and go check out Frankie's channel as he makes really good Kenshi content and I think it deserves more eyes. But before anything else, we're going to have to go ahead and create our character. We're going to be playing as a skeleton today and instead of a uh, normal skeleton game, we're gonna go with a Steely Dan. I don't know how many people will get this reference, but if you do, please let me know. I am beginning to feel very old. Steely Dan. Okay, so we spawned in at 10.03 in the morning on day one in Black Desert City. We are right in the middle of the map uh, in the skeleton lands. For this exploit, we're going to be going to the cannibal lands. So that's going to be in the northwest corner of the map. But before we do that, we're gonna go need to grab a few items before we get started. So I've sold all of my clothes and I'm running away. Uh, I don't really have any stats to speak of for the most part. A little bit in robotics, a little bit in some of the weapons stats. The main one that I'm looking for is thievery, which is currently at negative two. And I do have a 0.8 racial XP bonus. So uh, we're going to be trying to max out this stat first, but first we have to run out of the Deadlands and make our way. We're going over to Mongrel because it should be a pretty easy place to get geared up. Okay, so we've discovered Mongrel after a lot of running and we are now now running at 18 miles an hour. We've already gotten faster, which is going to help us for the next step because we're going to, well, we're going to have to run pretty fast for what we're going to do. Okay, so we've arrived in Mongrel uh, and we are going to need a trader's backpack. Trader's wooden backpack. This should be good enough. And just anything that can stack items in it. We could put in bandit pants will work to our inventory. Just anything to block off part of this and hopefully a large item that we're going to use next. I'm going to use um, sleeping bag would actually work right right here. Okay, we'll use sleeping bags. You could use building materials or just anything that won't have enough space in the rest of your inventory to complete this step. So now that we have the items, we're going to go north to the cannibal village. Assuming that we're fast enough, we are 16 miles an hour. That might actually not be fast enough. We just want to put down a few other items in our inventory. What about these pants and maybe this we also don't need. Okay, that brings us back up to 18. We technically don't even need a weapon here, so we can just put that down as well. Okay, and now we make our way north to really just any cannibal village up here we can go to. Uh, and the great part about this is that after we're done with this, we'll be able to heal up at Burns Tower in the north. But for the main exploit, we'll need to go to the cannibal lands up here. Okay, so just a totally normal village, uh, not actually a village at all. It's a cannibal village. Another reason why it's great to complete this as a skeleton is because they technically won't even eat you after they're done with you. Okay, but now we need to go into one of these huts, hopefully without aggroing one of the cannibals to be right behind us. So we just need to bring some cannibals with us, kind of attract them away, and then make our way back over into the hut. So hopefully they won't be too, too much faster than us right here. Okay, now we're going to just walk our way into the hut. It looks like we aren't going to be able to lose the cannibals, but uh, oh well. It's totally fine because we can just pause the game for the next part when we're going to complete this. So we go over to one of the chests and we loot it. This is going to give us a negative stat bonus if we have the cannibals in here, ironically enough. So now we just put the sleeping bag into one of their chests because we can't really uh, take one of their items out of it. And we might have actually been able to complete this with the iron plates, but whatever, we brought what we needed with us. And now my thievery is at level zero, but if I just keep on doing this where I just spam click, okay, watch what happens to my thievery. It's already at level 5, 6, 8, 10, 12. The game is totally paused. We would be doing this faster if there weren't cannibals in here, but I'm going to do this, and I guess it takes about like 20 seconds to already get 40 levels. We're going to do this all the way up to level 90, and then after that, it's going to start giving us 1 XP per second. Just basically auto hotkey this until you spam yourself to level 100 in thievery, and then go. Okay, I have now achieved level 90 in thievery. I am completely self actualized and perfect in every way. I'm going to run south because I did take a little bit of damage here because I didn't do it perfectly. Uh, and I did have to switch it back out to the other room because I accidentally let some of the cannibals hit me and now I am afraid because I am running in a group of 40 cannibals. All bloodthirsty, but I can't really tell why because I'm not made of flesh. But I'm going to have to uh, run back from whence I came. But fortunately, because I am a skeleton, I can walk through the water and escape fleshy beings. Oh God, there are a lot of them on me. 
me now. Okay, and I have escaped from the cannibals into the water, and now they are fleeing back. Go back, cannibal. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna go head south to, uh, actually, Burns Tower is over here, I forgot. I will use that to heal up. Okay, we've arrived at Burns Tower, uh, and he is a fellow skelly boy, so we can go upstairs, and I believe we can sleep in his bed, and he's fine with that. Yeah, for free? Okay, so free repairs we get. Amazing. Uh, we might still use our backpack for something or another. We won't really use a sleeping bag, though. That doesn't make sense as a skelly boy to have one of those on. But now now the question is, what should we steal? We have all of this amazing thievery ability. What is it useful for? Well, let's find out. So expensive computer components like this CPU unit. I know that doesn't really look like a CPU, but it is what it is. It's worth a good amount of money as well as grog can be pretty good. So we can put these into our trader's backpack to stack them if we manage to find any more. We'll just steal from Burns Tower. We are committing a crime here, but there's no one around. We're also going into a uh, stealth mode, which we are going to need stealth eventually because is what use is stealing if people can just see us doing it there is that but also where do we even sell stolen goods we are going to need to go back to i believe it's mongrel we'll check mongrel but also the hub is going to be really useful for stealing goods so what is actually useful to steal okay for our next stop we have arrived in the town of mongrel home to the ninja shinobi and uh their traders which we can use to our advantage obviously by stealing some stolen goods basically no one trusts each other in this town or the it is built on like thieves trust i can't really tell to be totally honest with you we do have a few stolen goods to sell though so we'll go over to uh who really has a lot of money we are starting to get limited by the sheer amount of money that each trader has if we just sell yeah there we go 2800 and then another 639 from each of these things of grog and you know until we train our stealth we might as well take some free ninja rags right use those as armor to improve our stealth before it really matters and then we'll sell our traders backpack because that's not really doing us any favors with stealth we needed it before with well it didn't really affect the thievery but we're gonna go do one of the most obvious things possible to this trader because we need a lot of money to join the ninja guild i'm going to walk in the door and we are going to go into sneak mode right in front of this man all right and look at all of the amazing goods that he has in this shop uh unfortunately we do have to lock pick there are we able to get out of his sight for this in order to not really so we will just close Close the door here. He walks over. We walk behind him, sneaking. And did he do it? Okay, yeah, we do have an opportunity here. So we will loot the small crate while he is not looking behind him. <laughs> This is like so goofy, I can't even believe it. We just take all of the skeleton limbs out of this box while he is right in front of us and the game is paused. And that is how you smackledorf people. Okay, so now I'm just gonna be, I'm totally normal. I didn't do any of that just now. And we can go and speak to him. Oh no, he did actually catch us because we spoke to him. Never mind. But they don't care <laughs> because it's a ninja town. We're fine, no one trusts that man anyway. Okay, so we can't really go back there, but we can fence his goods to someone else. But yeah, like a pretty, pretty great thing to be able to do in a game. Okay, so we're literally right next door and the next trader, <laughs> one door over, is totally fine with just taking all of this stuff off of our hands from the guy next door. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. He's going, that we'll get maybe three of these limbs off on him. Uh, this one, uh, whoops. He can't even afford it anymore. Eh, we'll, maybe we'll buy some something nice from him. Okay, whatever. We have enough to afford all of these stealthy pieces of clothing. Wow, very secret. We're gonna go over to the Shinobi Guild because this will just be useful in general for getting stolen goods. It would also be nice to get a stealth backpack, so we're gonna go ahead and pay the thief boss a uh, 100,000 cats to join the Shinobi thieves, and then if we go to the trader, the guy with the backpack, right up the stairs, and he should have a small thieves backpack, so we can purchase that from him. That's going to make it easier for us to carry around a lot of things. Okay, and we could sell our stolen goods to the shinobi trader. He's willing to buy anything stolen, but he's not going to give us as much money. So we'll just do this to shopkeepers in town. We do have a really good thievery skill here, so that should help us along. And great, again, 100% fencing chance. So that's obviously amazing. And we can now leave this city much richer than we started. Okay, so we depart Mongrel with only one slightly pissed off skeleton in town, but otherwise everyone is just totally fine with us in there. And 33 
3,000 cats richer. Okay, and now we are on day three. Wow, I can't believe only that little time has passed. Okay, we have arrived in Black Desert City, to home to some extremely expensive items. Uh, we are going to the prosthetics trader here, and in a totally normal way, we're just going to... I would like to go upstairs and be alone in your place. And here we go, we have a barrel... Uh, hang on a second, I need to make sure that no one sees me. Okay, no one can see me behind this wall. Here we go, we do have... These are in very high quality, we can go in and hopefully pick the lock over here. 24.9% chance, nothing going on over here, just ignore the sounds of lock picking. It's all in your head. Unfortunately, we will get a little bit of lock picking experience here, but if we could just get this lock open, it's gonna take a second. Okay, and I have opened the chest to all of the expensive masterwork limbs inside. Now we're gonna just go ahead and see which of these are the most expensive, because the masterwork ones aren't necessarily the most expensive. But if we just take all of these, just take them, we should be able to sell these, but not in this town, because the, they're a little bit more savvy in this town, and we probably won't get away with it. But somewhere else we can probably do it. Unfortunately, we are going to have to walk out of the acid rain nightmare that is surrounding us. But if we just put all of these in our inventory and then Steely Dan, don't mind me, just normal Steely Dan, just a normal guy, completely normal human be well, I'm technically not a human being, I am a skeleton. Goodbye, have a great day. All right, now that I've stolen everything that you own, I'm going to uh, leave this town because uh, I'll double check at the bar before I go because if they will take the stolen goods, then that would be amazing. Okay. Okay, I'm done sneaking around. I have nothing. Well, I do have a lot to hide, but I just don't want to. Okay, yeah, 58% chance of fencing. I don't really trust that. There's too much chance that we might get caught. Uh, if it were like 99 or something, that would be fine, but nope. Okay, so we are going to have to walk across the robot infested wasteland at five miles an hour. So we just have to avoid them. But other than that, we're pretty close to our next destination in Hang, which is going to be the site of even more stealing after this. Okay, and there in the distance, we have made it from Black. Black Desert City to the city of Heng. Uh, honestly, a, kind of an annoying crossing, but the only reason is because these things are just so heavy and expensive that we need to cash them in here. But there is a lot more stealing to do in here. Okay, so the barman does not care if we fence our stolen goods with him because it's totally different factions. So we've got uh, another 20,000 in profit. And once dawn comes, we should be able to trade with the other places. Okay, and the next day has arrived. And now we've managed to make a 83,000 cats. Okay, correction, uh, 104,000 cats, and we're still going. There's still more to be done, but everyone in town has run out of money to give me. So, uh, I do have more things to steal, but I guess I have to wait until tomorrow now. Uh, we're already over 100k cats, and that was my goal for the whole thing, but I'm going to stay at the skeleton trader here because I think we could just steal from him without bothering this faction. I mean, he won't be too happy, but he's just gonna stand there with his sword. Okay, again, we use the suit. Super, super secret closing the door technique and stand behind him. Oh, looks like we have to try it again. Okay, here I come. Oh, he didn't really have anything. Okay, whatever. Uh, we can still take uh, m just more skeleton parts. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that. Pause. Never mind. I'm not stealing. Okay, he did see me that time, unfortunately. But look, he just goes back into the shop and no one in the faction cares. So a great place to steal from because he's not affiliated with any of them. And look, the other store just opened up. Hello, hello. I'm I have stolen more things. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is rob a bank. So we need better lock picking skill if we want to do this. So I'm at the Shinobi Traders Guild here in Heng, and I'm just picking locks in the upstairs. And once I get better at this, we need at most 40 levels below in order to be able to pick the lock. So I need at least something because I start out at just one, which is pretty unbearable and low. After that, we can hit the last two locations, which are the bank. We'll rob a bank. And then after that, we're going to steal a bunch of blueprints and make a lot more money after that, but we have to go to Black Scratch for that one. And then we've done a lot of lock picking training. Our chances for uh, stealing from the bank has gone from 0% to 1% in enough places where we can actually attempt it now. So we can do this through the wall. 
I know, it's awesome, but uh, yeah, 8% chance, I'll take that. Good stealth. And once we get this, we'll have to go somewhere else to steal the eggs, unless if we're good enough, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, and it's time to rob the bank. We have, oh, only 100 cats. All right, I mean, it's better than nothing. Uh, there should be a Leviathan Pearl somewhere in here. I don't remember which one, but I'm just going to pick a bunch more of these locks. Yep, just through the wall, just through the solid wall, we are picking the lock. That's amazing. Okay, and we have run out of places, so we're just going to stand directly behind this man and pick the lock here. It's almost like he's being paid to avoid what. <laughs> it's almost like he's being paid to look away, man. <laughs> well, tell you what, you know, we couldn't get the Leviathan Pearl because I think it's like a level 100 safe or something ridiculous. But we did manage to get all these CPU units and deceive many guards. So I think a worthwhile trip we are going to be leaving here. Assuming we can sell these goods here because they are very heavy with probably, I don't know, maybe 130k cats, which is still pretty good. Okay, for our last major heist, we're making our way to Black Scratch. Now to both sell the stolen goods we got from the bank at Hang, because well, they won't care. Uh, but also, too, to just make off with a lot of weightless, very expensive items. And wow, I have a 110% chance of fencing my stolen goods here. So uh, that is definitely gonna work. We actually won't be able to make all of the money back from this person, but that's okay. That puts us already over 131k. Come on, everybody, open your doors. What we're looking for in this town is the Great Library, which is a home to many, many blueprints. And blueprints and books, all the ancient research books, which are very expensive expensive. Basically, weightless items that we can carry around a lot of them, and that is good for us, obviously. Uh, here we go, 25,000 cats. We're already at the 143,000 cats, but now we just make our way into... Okay, I believe it is this building here. Yep, that, that's all the books. Looks like somebody's attacking the town, so maybe not a bad time to make our brilliant heist attempt. We just go into... Whoops, there's a guy right there looking directly at me. Can you see through the bookshelves? No, you can't. All right, this is a great opportunity. I will be taking... Unfortunately, most of these are damaged. Okay, but upstairs, we have a great opportunity at getting a lot of blueprints. So I know that these might not look that valuable on their own, but they take up only a one-by-one one space, so we can carry around tons of them. And they also weigh... Well, there really is no weight, aside from the books. There's no weight to these items, and there's absolutely no one upstairs. Good. Yeah, ancient military documents. All of this looks pretty valuable and is very small, moreover. Okay, yeah, and then in the general storage chests, it's just all of this stuff is gonna be super valuable. These things are great. We take this, just don't even look at what anything is. Honestly, these would be really useful if you were building a base, but we're just kind of playing one character, so there's not really much point to that. So I'm just going to take it all and sell it somewhere else. Okay, and I can totally pick the lock from behind this other bookshelf over here to stay out of the shopkeeper's view. This has been pretty good experience for our lock picking, because every single time we fail, we gain like 10 to 15 experience here, but this should be the last of our major heists, and then we'll have over 150k cats and be ready to buy practically anything that we want in the game. Okay, and this one was really worth it. All of these are worth like 5,000. This was really the gold mine. Okay, I'm not back here. Just ignore me, and all of these are totally weightless. Each one of these is worth like 2,000. We're gonna have probably 200k, 300k cats by the time we're done with this. Okay, and a map of the Ashlands worth 5,000. I think we're going to have a hard time finding a shopkeeper who will take these items now, and I'm just going to walk away. I am not in here. I never came in. Uh, okay, they did see me on the way out, but that's just because my stealth is so bad. The success story of Steely Dan, the guy who gets away until the very end and then has to leave town. I am wanted in several cities. Please don't kill me. I can at least... Okay, I can totally just outrun you. I can just totally go serpentine and leave me alone. Leave me alone. I must run into the water or somewhere. Give me a minute. And we've made our way back into Hang, where now we can just go to any trader in town. We'll probably run out of money first. Uh, but, you know, we can just offload all of these blueprints. And what do you have? 25,000 cats. It does update every day. So let's just see what does this total offloading of all of these blueprints get us. And, okay, I have taken all of the money out of the local economy and now I have 277,000 cats. Just for... What did I do overall? 
this entire playthrough? Okay, so to summarize, we went to the cannibal lands and we leveled our thievery to 90. Then we went to Mongrel and just stole from everyone in town and then sold to each other. Then we got a thief's backpack. We went to Black Desert City. We stole everything from them too. Then we crossed the desert, robbed a bank and hang, and then came back to the Great Library. And in total, that was worth all nearly 300 K cats. So we've created this massive stealth ninja, Steely Dan. He is a thievious man. Anyway, I'd say that's about it for today. I'm feeling pretty satisfied with this character. Steely Dan. We didn't really do much story-wise, but he's got some base stats overall, and his thievery is pretty much maxed out. His lockpicking, too, is rising. And maybe more importantly than anything else, he has 277,000 cats, so this is a really good starting point for a character if we wanted to take him uh, in some actually useful direction, because that's about all we can do with thievery. There are some other pretty crazy stat cheeses, but overall, I would say that I'm pretty happy with him. Anyway, I've been wanting to get back to Kenshi for a while, so if you did make it to this point of the video, I do appreciate it. Anyway, as always, I'm AA. A big thanks to my patrons. They are able to reach through solid objects without getting their hands pinched. Until next time.